What's going on guys? So Apple held their WWDC keynote event today where they talked about all of their upcoming products that will be available and I thought I'd give you all a nice big recap of everything that they talked about. All the updated products and all the new things coming out. So the primary focus of the keynote was revolved around new MacBooks, well updated MacBooks, uh, demoing some of the new features of Mac OS X Mountain Lion and showing off the long-awaited iOS 6. So they started off with the MacBooks. The 11 inch and 13 inch MacBook Air models have been up updated to include 512 gigabytes of flash storage, 60% faster graphics, up to 8 gigabytes of memory, and 2.0 gigahertz i7 Ivy Bridge CPU. They've been upgraded with combined USB 3.0, 2.0 ports, and the FaceTime cameras now support 720p, so a little bit better quality um, when you're FaceTiming or, or video chatting someone. All MacBook Air models now have 4 gigabytes of RAM standard, and pricing remains almost the same except for the high-end 11-inch MacBook Air that's $100 cheaper now with the update. The 15-inch MacBook Pro models include Ivy Bridge quad-core i7 CPU up to 2.7 gigahertz, 1 gigabyte GeForce GT 650M graphics card, a standard 8 gigabyte of 1600 megahertz memory, and USB 3.0 2.0 ports as well, and pricing remains exactly the same on those $17.99 and $21.99. The 13 inch MacBook Pro includes Ivy Bridge dual core i7 CPUs up to 2.9 GHz and pricing remains the same on those $1199 and $1499. All of the updated MacBook Air and MacBook Pro models that I just talked about are available today and they ship today as well. So if you're interested in any of those, head on over to apple.com and uh, you're able to order them and they will ship today. So probably the biggest thing that they introduced today with the MacBook Pro line was the next generation MacBook Pro. So the two biggest things to this MacBook Pro is the fact that it's radically thinner than any other MacBook Pro, almost as thin as the MacBook Air. And it also has Apple's Retina display that's been rumored for a while. Uh, it's finally on one of their laptops. Uh, the 15.4 inch display has a 2880 by 1880 resolution with 220 pixels per inch, which adds up to a total of about 5.2 million pixels across the screen. Apple will ship a special build with Lion that will include updated versions of uh, applications like iPhoto, Mail, Safari, all, all their standard applications to support the increased resolution. Final Cut Pro and Aperture will also be updated by Apple, and uh, Apple's also working with major developers to get their apps updated as well, including Adobe Photoshop and even Diablo 3. It includes quad-core Ivy Bridge processors up to 2.8 gigahertz and Turbo Boost up to 3.7 gigahertz, up to 1600 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz RAM, maximum of 768 gigabytes of next generation flash storage. It weighs 4.46 pounds and is 0.71 inches thick. It does not have an optical drive. It includes an SD slot, HDMI, USB 3.0, 2.0 combo ports on the right, a MagSafe port, two Thunderbolt ports, another USB 3.0, 2.0 port, and headphone jack on the left. It also includes all new speakers and dual microphones. It's priced at $21.99 for the base model with a Retina display, 2.3 gigahertz quad core Ivy Bridge i7, 8 gigabytes of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce GT 650M, 1 gigabyte graphics card, and 256 gigabytes of flash storage. So the new MacBook Pro with the Retina display and, and all that good stuff is, avail is available today for order and it ships today as well. So next, along with showing off even more features of Mac OS X Mountain Lion, including immense iCloud support for nearly every single application throughout your entire Mac, um, they also talked about Game Center and Notification Center. Um, they basically showcased uh, three new features in Mountain Lion that they haven't talked about before, and uh, they also finally set a price and release time frame for this updated OS. So first, they talked about a new dictation feature that uh, was rumored a while back. It's just basically integrated throughout the OS and allows dictation anywhere that text is on your Mac. Uh, the next feature that they demoed was iCloud Tabs, a new feature in Safari. So iCloud Tabs is uh, basically just shows all the tabs open in Safari on all the iOS devices and Macs that are logged in with the same iCloud account. And Safari also gained a unified search and address bar to streamline its interface. Finally, a new feature called PowerNap was introduced. Basically, what it does is it will carry a function. Out, it will carry out functions while the Mac is charging and sleeping. So, new emails will be downloaded. Time Machine will automatically run. App updates will be applied, and other things will be done while the Mac is in PowerNap. This feature will be available on the new Retina MacBook Pro that I just talked about a minute ago, and uh, the second generation and later MacBook Airs. Mac OS X Mountain Lion will be available. Uh, $19.99 this July through the Mac App Store and all the Macs purchased from today forward um, are eligible for free upgrades when it's released. So if you purchased any of the new Macs today or if you plan on 
purchasing a new Mac uh, within the next couple of weeks. If you want to upgrade to Mac OS X Mountain Lion when it is released, you have the uh, availability to have uh, a free upgrade to Mac OS X Lion, so you don't have to pay the $19.99. Everyone else, $19.99 this July through the Mac App Store. So finally, Apple introduced the long-awaited iOS 6 for the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. iOS 6 features a completely upgraded version of Siri, and uh, it also includes Facebook integration throughout, completely redesigned Maps application that was made entirely by Apple, and a shared photo stream via iCloud and more. So I'll get into uh, all that right now. Um, so to start off, Siri has a ton of new features, including providing sports scores and schedules, which they did demo. So uh, if the sports game is going on right now, you just ask Siri um, for the, the scores or the updates on the sports, and uh, Siri will tell you. You can also make restaurant reservations. You can find a, a local movie listings and even launch applications, which is a feature we've seen on jailbroken iPhones for a while. Um, you just tell Siri to launch a game or an app, and Siri will do that for you. Siri will also support a few new languages, including Spanish, Italian, and French and uh, Siri will also now be available for the iPad second and third generations when you update to iOS 6. Apple has also partnered with many of the automakers including, to include Siri integration uh, for future cars over the next 12 months so they'll have like a, a Siri integration throughout the car. Uh, so the other thing that was rumored and uh, ended up coming true was Facebook integration was also introduced and uh, it's just basically like Twitter, Twitter integration that's on iOS 5 right now. Just system-wide login and the ability to quickly post within apps. Contacts can be updated automatically using information obtained through Facebook and third-party developers have Facebook available um, all the functionalities through the public API. A new do not disturb uh, switch uh, setting, all that good stuff was added to um, the iOS 6 as well. And uh, basically it allows users to schedule when notifications should not cause any sounds or visual alerts. So if you're sleeping or, or if you're in a meeting or something like that, switch the do not disturb on and, and enable all the settings and all that stuff. And no matter what happens, your phone won't make any noises or notifications or anything like that. The iPhone's phone app was updated as well. And uh, basically just has options to reply with a text message when you get a phone call or a prompt reminder to return a call later. And FaceTime is also available over cellular networks, so it's no longer Wi-Fi only, so you can have FaceTime calls in the car on, on your way to work or um, when you're not home. Um, so it's basically no longer Wi-Fi only. And that feature has been on jailbroken phones for a long time now, uh, but it's good that Apple has finally integrated that as well. Um, that's just a picture of the prompts that you can get after you make a after you get a phone call you can set it up so that you, they remind you to call you later um, or you can set up a custom prompt so if you get a call and just want an automatic reply you can set that up as well and uh, that's just uh, Scott Forstall introducing FaceTime over cellular like I said it's been a feature on jailbroken phones for quite some time now and uh, now it's just finally been kind of Apple approved so the next thing that they talked about was shared photo streams and uh, just let you choose photos to share with only certain family and friends. Shared photos can be viewed by other iOS devices, iPhoto, Aperture, all that good stuff. And they also work uh, through the web and through Apple TV. They also introduced a new application called Passbook. And basically what that is, um, it's essentially a wallet-like application that will contain all the payment cards and electronic tickets that you have. So um, as they showed, customers at like Starbucks can make payments using their gold cards through Passbook. Movie tickets can also be purchased through Fandango and can be redeemed through Passbook as well. And something else that's pretty cool with Passbook, airline boarding passes can even and even sporting event tickets will be accessible through Passbook as well. So probably one of the biggest things that they introduced in iOS 6 um, that was rumored just a few days before WWDC was a completely redone Maps application. Apple has essentially remade the entire apps maps application from the ground up. Um, every bit of it, every bit of it, well, I can't talk today, is uh, Apple created and uh, it's no longer Google Maps. It's just uh, maps and, and Apple has created every single aspect of it. It will offer integration with Yelp for businesses, um, so business list listings and uh, traffic information is also collected in real time from other iOS users as well. So as you're um, mapping away from point A to point B, um, traffic information will be updated as well as uh, other iOS users kind of input the traffic information and let everyone else know what's going on. Um, so it's actually a really cool uh, way to kind of stay on top of the traffic and make sure you're not late. Um, and it also um, integrates turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Um, so the traffic and turn-by-turn -turn navigation go hand-in-hand. Hand, hand in hand. So you can basically route different, uh, different 
um, roads and, and different routes from point A to point B in real time and they will update the different routes depending on the traffic information. So turn-by-turn -turn navigation is something well that we've all been waiting for and uh, it's been upgraded finally in this map application and Siri can actually talk out the directions for you so um, it's all getting closer and closer almost being like Garmin GPS or, or something like that so um, basically you have Siri telling you all the directions, you have um, updated traffic, you have real-time um, route um, rerouting your uh, point A to point B and, and all that good stuff. So iOS 6 is, uh, well some of the other things that they mentioned include um, basically a lost mode and here's some of the pictures of the new map application as well. Um, all this was done by Apple. They talked about how they have this app, um, this section here called flyover. Basically they took pictures of basically everything um, that, that they could have been mapped and uh, everything has been done by Apple so it's no longer Google supported or anything like that. Um, the maps is completely redone. I'll go back and show you. This is going to be turn by turn directions. And like I said, Siri integration as well. So Siri can tell you, um, you know, 0.5 miles exit onto US 101 North um, and all that good stuff. And again, just another picture of uh, the maps application. So um, here's just kind of a nice big cloud of everything that's going to be in iOS 6. There's over 200 new features in iOS 6. Some of the other things that they mentioned include a lost mode. So when you uh, lose your phone, you can send a phone number to your lost iDevice. And a person who has it can um, get that phone number and call you back and let you know where it is. They also have redesigned stores. They have updated alarms. They have updated email signatures. They have HDR, HDR improvements and Game Center challenges. Um, just a whole bunch of good stuff. Um, iOS 6 is only compatible with the iPhone 3GS and later, so iPhone 2G and iPhone 3G users, you're not going to be able to get iOS 6. Um, the, they're dropping support for the first generation iPad, so iOS 6 is only going to be available for second and third generation iPads, not the first generation. And surprisingly enough, only the fourth generation iPod Touch is going to get iOS 6. So um, the first, second, and third generations iPod Touch won't be able to have iOS 6, so they're cutting out a lot of users on this update. It will be available in the fall, but a beta, beta build is available for developers in the Apple Developer Center today. So if you're a developer and have a dev account, you can go ahead and go to developer.apple.com and download um, iOS 6 and try it out for yourself. I'll have a video showcasing all the new features on iOS 6, the iPhone and the iPad, and uh, should be an annotation somewhere on the screen. So if you click it, um, you can head on over to that video and you'll show you all the iOS 6 features. So there you go, that's just a complete recap of Apple's WWDC keynote. No new iPhone like we all hoped, but maybe sometime in the fall alongside iOS 6, they may release a new iPhone. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to post a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you're excited or disappointed or, or, or anything about that, um, about the keynote, what you were expecting, um, anything you want, go ahead and post a comment down below letting me know. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Also hit that subscribe button for future Apple videos, and I'll see you guys later.